the board of selectmen tonight. Um, in attendance is myself, uh, first selectman, Mike Ergo, Bob Carlson, selectman, selectwoman Nita Kincaid, Christine Dias, admin finance for the town, and Juliet Hodge, town planner and economic development is here. Um, we have other members of other commi committees on this call as well, and I'm very happy and thankful uh, for those who have taken the time out of their busy <coughs> this time of year to come to this meeting. Um, I do see that I believe Senator Summers is also on the line. So thank you, Senator, for also being here mm -hmm. tonight. Um, we have a, a, a um, kind mm -hmm. of a, an agenda here to uh, basically the only agenda item is water sewer update and discussion. Um, on this agenda, we'll allow public comment um, after each agenda item. So after agenda item number two, any members of the public will be able to comment. And we'll actually um, allow really, once we go through the presentations, we really want some interaction from all the board and commission members as well as the public. So uh, what'll happen tonight is uh, just a brief uh, uh, presentation from, uh, from Juliet and from Ken Labby, who's been working with us from Signature Group. And he's been uh, kind of our consultant um, that's been working with us since uh, just after we received the facility study that we received from Weston and Sampson. Um, just a couple of notes from me before Juliet takes the floor. Um, you know, basically it was actually just about a year ago that we had a meeting fairly similar to this um, where we uh, had spoken with Weston and Sampson and they were about to kind of embark or in the process of embarking on their Weston and Sampson um, facilities uh, study, which they did complete and we got back. And so we've been pretty busy over the last year, year and a half, kind of working on um, receiving data, but also trying to put in action some of that data that we received uh, toward our water and sewer initiatives. So why we're here tonight, it's not to, um, certainly not to sell uh, anything to anyone. It's really to provide an update uh, and also to get some good, uh, healthy dialogue going on where we're at. Our plan of conservation and development and our sewer studies, you know, have goals in them. And, and we as, uh, as leaders have been working towards uh, fulfilling those goals and those objectives that are in those documents. So this is really uh, an opportunity tonight to kind of talk about where we're at um, and then get some um, feedback from, from all of our uh, constituents here. So we've got people that, uh, you know, that own property in the area. We've got some board and commission members from whether it's Board of Finance, WPCA, um, economic development. So we're really happy for everyone who's shown up tonight and maybe some others will see it on, um, and even Inland Wetlands is here, uh, and maybe some others will see it online and they'll pop on and, and be a part of the conversation as well. So before I take up any more time speaking, uh, I'd like to turn it over to, to Juliet for a little bit, and then uh, I'll turn it over to Ken. Um, and I'll give a, a, a quick intro to Ken before we go to him, but Juliet, the floor is yours. Um, I'm going to be as brief as possible here. I just wanted to provide a little more context to this whole process. It's the planner in me, I can't help it. Um, so I wanted to emphasize a few things about planning in general that a, that a town has to go through. So a municipality is charged with the orderly development of their town. And some of these, um, some of the issues that come up are all part of a long-term uh, planning process. So uh, that could be the provision of services, emergency services, uh, education, uh, and it, it can include broadband or water and sewer. So all of these things, a, a municipality has to keep in mind the whole balancing act. And that's why we do that plan of conservation and development every 10 years. So every 10 years is a time to sort of reset, reevaluate our goals and objectives and mission and vision and all of that. And so it's not you know, some of these issues seem like they, they come up suddenly, but they don't. This has been going on a long time. So the as far as the water and sewer initiatives go, they started, like I said before, about 50 years ago, um, when the state actually mandated us to tie in to Stonington. Um, we were able to prove that we didn't really uh, need that at that time, at, that the projected growth for North Stonington was not going to pick up for some time so we were given a little reprieve there but we did um, establish a, a sewer authority and we completed a report like we were supposed to and did a sewer study and we decided that 2020 was the time we were going to reevaluate all of these 
you know, our, the pace of our development and, you know, our status, so to speak. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, I, I titled this, you know, not if, but when, even though a town is sort of charged with the or orderly development of their town, sometimes the state can step in and order you to do other things. Um, that could be education mandates, the affordable housing mandate, and it, and it could come to a point that if the state decided that uh, we weren't able to protect our water sources, resources that we would have to come up with a solution. So that's where it all sort of happened. Um, we did establish a sewer district in 1994, and that sewer district has essentially remained the same all the way to present time and has been, um, you know, readopted, so to speak, in, in subsequent uh, plans of conservation and development. That 50 years is a long time and a lot of things have changed. Uh, the states have even changed their focus. So before they really focused on um, decentralized systems, allowing package plants to occur in various locations, but now they're, they've you know, reversed course and they're all about centralized systems and regional systems. And that, has, uh, that goes for water and sewer actually. Um, there are different changes in the fire code and the health code with respect to fire suppression and individual septic systems, you know, where uh, individual buildings now require a septic system, which could be pretty costly for new developments. So a lot has changed over the years that has caused us to sort of reevaluate um, the provision of services. Uh, I don't know if, if the people on the side of the screen are sort of blocking the view can everybody see my screen? I didn't even check. Yes. Okay. You can move around for those who need to. You can move your little boxes of people on the side if you need to. You can drag it with your clicker and move it. Um, so this is just sort of an overview of the, in, the investment that we've made over the years. And it's been quite a bit. It's, uh, this is just the later investment. The, there were studies that began way back in you know, 1970 and 72. And, uh, but this is just the later efforts that we've made. Now, when uh, Milltown Commons came in, and uh, I wanna say it was 2008, you know, that sparked a lot of, uh, you know, that re-energized the process of figuring out whether or not we wanted to tie into Stonington and whatnot. So a lot of, there was a lot of flurry of, of plans that occurred then. And then our POCD also happened to coincide with that time. So you can see that there has been a lot of grant money that was spent, uh, tax money that was spent on coming up with these uh, studies. It was well supported by, you know, the selectmen and the planning and zoning commissions and whatnot at the time, because we know that eventually, again, we have to do that balancing. We have to plan for the future. And one of the things I wanted to emphasize, planning for utilities can be a benefit. So if the town feels strongly about preserving rural character and, and not developing certain areas, it's almost helpful to actually plan for where the utilities are gonna be to direct that development to those areas. And so that helps you maintain that balance of rural character and, and denser development in other areas. So we have to get this right too. You know, all the boards and commissions need to get together and, and be sure that this is what we want and where we want it. And uh, before I add on to that, I just wanted to emphasize that we do have a sewer, a sewer district. That's this area, if you can see my cursor on the bottom. Um, and I, uh, we, this area has been selected long ago in 1994 through those series of planning efforts with Weston and Sampson and some of the uh, Dimar, for example, we did come up with various phases, uh, recognizing that this should be done in phases. And um, we've sort of gone back and forth as to which parcels would be in which phases. Um, a lot of uh, it is being directed by the private entities that have a need right now. And so, you know, that caused a slight shift in uh, or swapping of phase one and phase two. But essentially the goal is to service the, uh, quite a few of the properties in the economic development district and industrial district and up to the rotary. So those, the parcels that are sort of darker shaded in this map below were the initial um, parcels that we envisioned being serviced in these first two phases. Uh, 
back in 1994, much more of the industrial zone, I think was uh, considered to be phase 3A and, and phase four, but we, we are just focusing on one and two right now. Um, why do we need utilities? Well, one of the major changes that has occurred is that the world is a little more competitive now. And uh, North Stonington actually has done things quite well over the years. And uh, we've been selective about our development, which is great. And now we have a lot of open parcels, a lot of key commercial sites. That these are large 100 plus acre parcels that people are starting to look at. So again, we really do need to do this uh, the right way and, and think about what we want and where we want it. And this is how planning for utilities can help us with that. Um, this is sort of the then and now, like I said, there's been some changes pre-recession uh, planning boards were a little more defensive when it came to development. Now we're looking at what can we get in here to help us with our tax base. And, uh, you know, taxes are a big concern that came out loud and clear in the POCD. And it's been important to me to figure out, well, where do we want this development? Where will it not affect our character too much? Where will it, uh, we get the most bang for our buck? We've done a lot of work of changing the zones. We've added the, rec, uh, the resort commercial zone at one end of the town. We've consolidated the zones. We've fixed the zoning regs. We've done everything, you know, to try to, to, to direct that development to one area of town. Um, and then the region has done a lot of work as well. They've, they've completed a regional water plan and a regional wastewater plan. And uh, that's, gov that's you know, influencing the decisions that the individual towns within these regions are making. Uh, there's been a lot of support over the years, uh, or at least recognition that uh, in order to remain co uh, competitive, that utilities are necessary. I won't dwell on that because this is really isn't a political issue. Um, what, what we need to be focused on is building on the success that we have, and we are doing well. We, I can't say that enough. We really have made a lot of progress in the last 10 years. There's a lot of success stories, and we want to we want to build on that, but we have to figure out how we want to build on that, and where does it make the most sense to direct these utilities so that we can get the commercial developments and the hospitality developments to, to locate there. Because, you know, the other thing that I think is important to remember, different uses require different utilities, right? So people say, well, we don't need sewers, you know, we can uh, just build, uh, they call them uh, dry businesses, you know, businesses that don't require a lot of uh, water and sewer. But do we really want a town of warehouses? You know, or do we want some more of these uh, hospitality venues, which are higher users of water? Uh, you know, that's something to consider. And again, directing utilities in certain places and getting areas prepared or even buildings built to accept certain types of uses becomes important. Uh, I was thinking about the quality of life and where our businesses are located and how we can better um, direct certain businesses to our commercial districts, which is ultimately the goal. I never want to say out loud that home occupations aren't important because they very much, they absolutely are. It's where you want home occupations to begin and you want them to get successful, so successful that they have to move to a commercial location. And this is where having those ready, shovel ready sites or, or, or buildings already built so that somebody can transition into a commercial area is so key. Because if you look here on the slide, what types of home occupations we happen to have a lot of in this town, you notice uh, contractors are, are high up on the list and personal and professional services. The contractors, that can be an issue. That's, that's a, that can not look so great next to your house sometimes. Uh, you want them in a commercial building in your commercial zone. You want food processing in a, in a commercial zone. Retail where if it gets too popular, you know, hopefully Brian Rathman, hoping your wife's store will be wildly popular and she'll have to move into a spot down in one of the commercial villages uh, districts. But some of these you don't want to stay in your rural zones. And if you can see by the second chart, most of those home occupations are in the R80 zone. So this is where you want to direct them to a different area. So I guess as a planner, I want the residents 
to help the town prepare for the future. I want us to be very clear on what we want and where we want it and how we can support that. And that doesn't mean necessarily financially. That, a lot of times it just means via zoning and being business friendly and, and having an EDC that uh, is supportive of these businesses and having a, you know, the selectmen that are also in, involved. And you know, there's so many ways that we can all work together. We had that training with CERC, some of you might've gone to that we're all on the same team. And our, our uh, team purpose is to uh, you know, support the type of development that protects our character and that also helps our, our grand lift. And you know, I think it's important in North Storrington to have a mix of, of different things and not just focus on dry uses like warehouses, but talk, think about some vibrant uses that might attract a younger generation uh, that might be able to support some of our existing hospitality uses and our, our blossoming tourism, you know, I don't want to say industry, but we have a lot of wineries and breweries. You know, you need people around and you need some interest. Um, so we need to decide how much growth we're comfortable with, where we want that and how we can support that. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we're here today. Um, I think I have one more slide. So just to go review. We do have an established sewer district. We don't have to think about that. It's done, it's there. Um, we do have to think about a new sewer plan because that was supposed to, you know, that process was supposed to begin this year per the 1994 plan. Um, this is something that has been supported over the years. Now we just have to figure out how to do it. And that's where Ken is gonna help us out here in a second explaining how that might be done. But one of the most important things is we have private investors ready to go right now. That's great. Not everybody can say that. So, um, sorry, that's not me. That's my husband. <laughs> sorry. Um, and that we do have access to some grant money. Should we go that route? Uh, we may not end up have, you know, we don't necessarily have to do that, but there is extra funding available right now. And uh, Dan Springs brought up a, an interesting point the other day during one of our meetings that the COVID effect actually has drawn, made, made it so people aren't traveling. They're staying, you know, having staycations or staying in the area. So uh, supporting our local tourism and, and sort of building on the successes that we have there is pretty important. And then as a planner, I really feel it's important to point out that sprawl is costly to taxpayers. You want to figure out where you want your development and make it go there. Um, that's how you protect your environment and that's how you protect your rural character. So I will let Ken take it from here to talk about some of the ways to make this happen. I'm gonna pull up your, if I can find it here. I'm gonna pull up- While, your, you're, while you're pulling that up, Juliet. So just so everyone knows, um, I, I think I kind of set the table so at the beginning, but when we got the Weston and Sampson uh, facility study, it was pretty clear that we, we, we weren't sure if Weston and Sampson will have been the ones that would help us actually kind of make this happen. And that's, that's where, you know, it, it ended up being that that wasn't going to be the case. So we were very fortunate that um, Ken was able to help us out here and is, is kind of getting us to a, a place where we're going to have some action on some of these items. But um, Ken's going to be able to talk a little bit about some of the questions that I think people have. Um, and we, uh, and we, and I'll turn it over to Ken. Thanks for being here, Ken. And for I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So just a matter of background, I think it would be helpful for everybody to understand that, um, I'm from Connecticut originally, but I've worked coast to coast. Uh, and I've been involved with, um, various forms of financing and public private partnerships, uh, around the country. And I was asked to focus, dial in on, how things are financed or how things can be financed uh, in Stonington that doesn't require uh, a levy on the tax roll. There's two kinds of debt basically that a town can be involved with. One is a government obligation debt or they call it a go or go bonds uh, where you take the tax roll and a portion of the tax roll services the debt. A revenue bond issue is entirely different it doesn't uh, attach itself to the tax roll. 
and it's income stream specific. So you may have a bridge, you may have a toll, you know, a toll bridge, a, uh, uh, a road that you build, uh, a, a water system that you build, and that water system generates a specific income stream, and that income stream pays the revenue bond de uh, debt, and depending on how it's guaranteed, will depend on what the cost of funds are. So I've set off on this adventure that started as a, you know, a small project that was going to connect water to the KOA from uh, the AZ headquarters, which is uh, the frontage road entrance of 46 uh, North Norwich Westerly Road. The distance, I uh, forget the total distance, um, but we were, you know, four or 5,000 feet uh, plus footage of pipe to be built uh, to connect the property specifically. Weston and Samson had a, a budget, they revised it, and ultimately we came up to a $3 million bit budget. I was looking at ways of saving money, phasing it, uh, you know, looking at participation. And what I concluded was that there was just too much reliance on two parties to pay a $3 million tab and there had to be a better way. Um, what ended up happening is, um, you know, knowing uh, a little bit about bond financing, gov you know, government debt bond, bond financing, I, uh, I expanded the, the search a little bit to see if I could widen the area of, of properties and participation. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, we started with really just the KOA in the vineyard. Uh, we reached out to the tribe, we, you know, the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation. Uh, we reached out to Jason Quinlan and others to try to get them to participate. And I still think they will. The more participation we have, the better for everybody. Um, but after crunching, you know, a lot of math, what I've come up with is that we can finance this. And this is partially due to verbal commitments. Uh, for investing cash, we can invest this first phase to connect the vineyard uh, KOA with an easement through the Quinlan property and or the tribe's property uh, and make a connection to Westerly Water in the frontage road. And we will have extended a 12 inch water main all the way up to KOA and six inch water lines running to both of the property, hopefully for a cost somewhere in the two and a half million dollar range. Just to, you know, we want to be inclusive. Uh, this is an interesting exhibit. I mean, so I explored, you know, this is a map that's almost similar to Juliet's map in terms of the, you know, the, uh, the districts that she was looking at. I just did this arbitrarily uh, to try to create districts on a map and start to build on the map. The core district is really where you see all the stars there. Um, in the center is district one for me where KOA is what I call District 5. It's across Pendleton Hill Road. Um, the area south of Interstate, 90, Interstate 95, District 4. Uh, and I think uh, on the upper left, my eyes are not that good, but I think that the northwest corner of uh, Route 2 and 184 is District uh, 4. And so I just numbered them just so I could, as, as I was adding property owners, I could identify where they were and what districts they were part of. In response to a desire to have water, I've included uh, not just the core district and the KOA, but also uh, Jovial Foods on the west side of Route 2. She's expressed a, you know, a serious interest to connect to water and we've looked at that. She seems to be pursuing it and she may be uh, doing her own uh, connection to the same water pipe uh, at 46 Northwich Norwich Wesley Road. On the northwest corner of um, Route 2 and 84, Mr. Zeno and his partners and Mr. Reich and his partner are planning basically, you know, substantial development, mixed use. Uh, there's a plan to uh, convert the existing office building to multifamily, in my understanding, a sale of one of the lots, uh, building of a communications tower and other infrastructure. And Mr. Reich has plans of large scale residential and multifamily and commercial development. So there's a lot going on here in concept, but if you don't deliver the utilities, at some point we run out of road and it seems to be pretty fast. So initially I was just gonna focus on the KOA 
and that part of it, we have, we verbally have the commitments to proceed with them, uh, with KOA and the vineyard paying the majority of that cost. Uh, we believe that that system and that those agreements can be put together with legal counsel uh, in the first quarter of next year, uh, pending, you know, pending, you know, actual written commitments. Um, beyond that, you know, we looked at the cost of those other two districts and also uh, Mr. Noonan's property, you can see in the north, the upper left-hand corner here. Mr. Noonan has hundred acres, actually a little behind, right? Uh, there and then. Oh, he's up here. Right. Yeah, you're up there, there you go. So he's a very interesting guy, a Merrill Lynch uh, investment advisor with considerable funds under management. I think he's a good, per he's got an, a goal to be a uh, key person in the overall planning and <laughs> implementation. And so when we ran our numbers, I actually included him in each one of the pieces uh, because he's been very uh, proactive, positive, and engaging in the process. It just so happens there's water, there's well water on his property. And there's some question as to what the velocity and availability of water is. Uh, well water in and around the Chinook Brook. Uh, Westerly has a well and a well right. Um, we're hearing varying uh, information basically that says that there's, you know, we'll say re you know, reasonable amounts of water to considerable amounts of water, which could alter our path, depending on what the ultimate findings are. So going back to the, the financing and, and the process, the concept we've come up with for the town, we've, we've deferred to the town all along to try to be responsive to their goals. A lot of work has, has gone into preserving the, the exclusive services area for the town of North Stonington. And we've tried to be loyal to that, that goal. And in doing that, we came up with a concept of forming a associated entity, a public private partnership that would basically enable some of these uh, projects through design development, finance, construction, delivery, and then ultimately what we want to do is we want to get the entire system up to a point of fiscal you know, balance so that it could be used by the town to float a non-tax roll revenue bond issue to entirely own and control the water system. And we, could, we would reconvey it. They would have a first right. We would reconvey the entire system to the town, which would enable them to be able to retain control of their ESA and have absolute control of the water council and water system, including the infrastructure. <clears throat> you know, beyond that, we looked at the sewer. Uh, I only looked at it in the context of an additional $2.6 million commitment. And then the water, an additional $2.3 million equipment uh, commitment, which I allocated to the Jovial Foods uh, facet of the water development and to the Zeno Reich Noonan intersection, about a million dollars. These are just my numbers working through how to include everybody in a logical sequence to build this system with everything that we have in place, starting with the cash commitments that we verbally have today. So it looks like all this could come together in the next 24 months, you know, 12 to 24 months, that we can finance much of the front end with cash that will deliver the water that we desire. Hopefully we'll have the sewer commitment. Uh, that's a, a matching funds basically uh, for an expansion by town of, North, town of Stonington. And we'd be tying into their sewer capacity and expansion of their system to a point. Um, <clears throat> my math, under my current math actually uses all these figures to come up with a budget of 7.6 million. For now, we're assuming all cash, but if we, we were able to get bond financing or grants or other funding to, to use instead of cash, it would be much preferred, especially grants, because grants don't have to be paid back. It's a one-time one -time fee. The end goal here is just to honor the town's goals, deliver the water in the water system, and a system that can be reconveyed to the town. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, I think that you can understand or everyone here has 
probably heard there's a lot it sounds like we've, we've done a lot of research and we're, we're actually you know basically uh, on the path towards at least getting the the more immediate need met which is the immediate need is water for the koa and then the vineyard over there um so ken's working on that now with that being said um thought we'd First, I'll ask if the selectmen have any uh, comments or feedback or uh, anything you'd want to ask. It's, you know, basically, we'll end up opening the floor up here to just have some general conversation. Mike, I, I have nothing right now. Wait to hear other speakers. Thank you, Bob. No, not, not anything at the moment either. Okay. Go ahead. Over the, the impact of the tax rolls quickly before you turn it over. Remember what like, we were talking about in the office today? So the impact to the tax rolls, oh, Ken, yeah, we talked about that earlier. And the fact is this, I mean, at least from a tax roll uh, impact, to, like taxing people, there is none because we're talking about a private, private funding here. But on the other side of it, we're talking about development, which is going to help tremendously the grand list, as you kind of talked about in your presentation, Juliet, did you want Ken to el elaborate on that? Yeah, uh, the I, re revenue bond thing. You know, I, that overlooked, was I overlooked. I'm sorry, go ahead. I overlooked some things actually. I think I know what she's referring to. Go ahead, Ken. So um, the revenue bond issue is based on a couple income streams. The first income stream is the purchase, a wholesale purchase of water. And I've had a brief conversation with Westerly and I have a thought that some of the private well owners would participate and sell water to the town effectively or to this, this platform for a discount. For just for calculations, I assume a 20% discount. So in effect, the entity, the water entity would buy water for 80 cents on the dollar and sell it for a dollar. It's not a huge margin, but it does add up and it's part of an income stream. Through some research, I was able to find a, uh, the Mashantucket Pequot uh, Tribal Nation has a plan for a half million square foot industrial building. And I was lucky enough to find a, an example in California of how it was handled by three different cities in a comparative analysis. And it got me thinking about what we could do here. And uh, one of the things that they did, they did a roster of things that, for charges to you know to generate income for the city and or the enterprise, one is they charge the system development fee. So they they would charge if you were going to bring a half million square foot industrial building on, or a hundred thousand foot hotel uh, or homes, you would get there would be a system development fee. Typically, there would be uh, uh, what do you call it? The meters basically. There's a meter charge that gets charged. But they also had what they called community facility district uh, fees. And they, they uh, applied them to the land and to the buildings. And what that means in my mind, I, I ratcheted the numbers way, way down to make sure they made sense you know, for where we are in our context. And uh, what I did is I did a calculation as we brought each site into the, the district uh, we would charge them either in current dollars or upon groundbreaking, however it works. Uh, we would charge them a land community facilities district fee, and we would charge them a building district services fee. And when you bring in the number of properties here that are planned for development, it really starts to add up to real, you know, to significant funds over time. And uh, it provides the money for the city to provide the services, but also to build the infrastructure, uh, you know, master grading and, and drainage systems, road systems, sidewalk linkages, street lighting, sewer and water infrastructure. I mean, you could build a lot into a bond issue. So I've been running math to just kind of test it to see how it would work. And, and I shared it with Mike and he liked the idea of, this, of the community facilities district fee, which is something the town can entirely manage on a scale that works for this town. And uh, it provides significant funds to uh, build out the infrastructure and ultimately uh, lays the, ramps the uh, water and sewer system or utility to a point where you can buy it 
fiscally solvent where it services its own debt. So what we're saying there is, is in a commercial property, typically you would have 50 to 20% uh, uh, surplus income over your debt service. They call it debt service coverage. And it's a similar thing with a revenue bond issue. So once your income stream is there and you don't have a risk of default effectively and it stands on its own and it's got a five year or seven year trailing history, the bond underwriters can get behind it, issue the bond debt based on its actual performance and the guarantee, if any, is nominal. So the city doesn't have to guarantee the debt. It's strictly income-based or income-based. Uh, you may have some guarantees, but it's really based on the history of the bond issue and the associated risk. So just more math, more things that we've been working with. And the underlying goal was is to try to basically build the system without borrowing any money from the city and relying entirely on the projects, the property owners, uh, and the land that gets rolled into the district. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Thank you, Juliet. Um, you know, if we go back to the, the, the reason we have done all this and Juliet opened up with it basically as our planner, we are lucky to have Juliet who has so much experience and really a lot of, a lot of ideas and, um, you know, just being thoughtful about our community. We, we want development where we want it and we don't want it where we don't want it. And so, you know, in order to assure that we, we need to make sure we're taking the steps that are appropriate. Um, and so that's, you know, I think that's why the POCD guided us this way. And that's where, why we are where we are. Um, with that, I, I think enough out of, of us, um, I'd like to hear from anyone else at this point um, who would like to comment or ask any questions. And if we can answer them, we will. Um, and actually, let me just preempt that with one more thing. And that's the Stonington issue, which I know folks will, will ask about on the sewer side. Um, I did have a, a discussion with their first select woman, uh, Danielle Cheesebro, just today. And in order to, uh, they, you know, they still are at a, they're still in a situation where as much as they're very um, accommodating and we've had some good discussions, they don't know what their real capacity and needs are themselves. And so I think that the path forward to talk more with Stonington is to have a greater discussion with um, maybe some members of different boards and commissions, but also to bring the Department of Health in um, and DEP, because I think we need some help from the state basically to help guide us forward on this. Um, we all have the best of intentions and thoughts, but um, I think because of the guide, because of some of the rules and regulations, we need a little bit more assistance um, to understand what they are capable of with their plant. And um, that will help guide us on that side. With that being said, uh, you can raise your hands and be recognized. And I'm happy to um, recognize anyone who has questions or comments. Yes, go ahead, Frank. Well, Mike, it, uh, I've been in North Stonington uh, since 2008, and we're very excited to see uh, some infrastructure uh, being thought about uh, for the area, and uh, we'll, we'll support the town on how, however we can. Thank you, Frank. That's nice to hear from you. Frank's the owner of the, uh, the old... Uh, uh, the acres where the old hospital building is and then behind there he's got his business as well at the rotary so thank you frank other comments questions click on start video there you go all right see. Uh, yes dan dan yes, dan Yes. Uh, if we could pull up uh, Juliet's first uh, illustration, and I think it's important for people to see the the chart that demonstrated the grand list versus the mill rate increases. There we go, number three. Yeah, if everyone can see that, I mean, since 2013 forward, I mean, we've really had no increase in our grand list whatsoever. And yet through the investments we have made in town improvements and uh, um, the emergency management center, certainly the school modernization project, 
our, our mill rate has moved up. But it's, you know, it's obvious just from that one chart that we need to do something about lifting our grand list. Now, for those who don't know, uh, they, you might have just recently gotten letters relative to the revaluation. You know, we're hoping that uh, residential property uh, values have gone up in this reval, which is 10 years from the last major one in 2010. So it should help with our grand list. But, uh, you know, we have to look to the future here and realize that we have um, the capacity to really build out this uh, uh, industrial zone. It has all of the attributes and, uh, you know, to think that it doesn't, all you have to do is look south of Route 2, south uh, uh, from 95, and you can see what Stonington has done. There's no reason why we can't do the same. And uh, to me, I think it's very reasonable that we can um, move this thing forward, talking about uh, a revenue bond uh, debt issue. Um, and we can flesh that out and we have that ability. And I think for the townspeople, you know, I always come back to the phrase will versus capacity. Well, we have the capacity and it's just the will of the people to say, let's move this thing forward. I think the time has come. Uh, I think this chart uh, that I brought attention to the grand list and mill rate you know, is telling you the story and it's telling us what we have to do to navigate into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I see Joe Gross, I assume. Joe, you are recognized. You just have to unmute. Am I unmuted now? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Mike, I just think uh, one big thing I heard was that we, uh, this would be handled by private funding. And, and uh, I think that's what Tim mentioned there. Uh, the sewer study, you know, 50 years ago, I agree with everybody, it's been there, but uh, that part was coming up Route 2. I thought all, most of our development was coming up through Route 2 and up past the Rotary, and that's what we was looking for, our development stuff. Uh, my main concern right now is all I'm hearing is KOA, KOA, KOA. So I think it should be more than that, but, uh, I, I just don't know. I think it's going to be a cost to us because I do hear bonding in there and that, that that comes up. But my main concern is I think our board of finance, the board itself, must get on and be brought up and educated into the involvement in what, what we're talking here now. Uh, my feeling is they've got to do a long-term budget and know where the town is going before you do these yearly, the small yearly budgets. And I... I heard none of this discussed in any board of finance thing as to the cost. But I think that's a very, very important part to the town's people in that. And that's all I would say. I just, I want to see them more involved into it. Because it, it definitely is going to cost us something, but I'm glad to see we're moving ahead. Because I've been here 50 years and I still haven't seen nothing move on that Route 2 development stuff. But I, I'm all in agreement with going with it though. And I thank you for the time. Just Thank to you to clarify, Joe, the, the sewer district has been there that you were, you're correct that the first phase was always identified as going up route two to the rotary. And the second phase is, you know, branched off from there. Okay. Julia, how hard is it for you to bring up that exhibit that listed? Uh, you had it up for a minute. The list of all the property owners, the current set of property owners that we're working with. Keep going down, I think. Uh, keep going. That first like zone one, two, three, four, five. Uh, keep going. This will this will be. You can keep going. This is just. Uh, let's see. Keep, keep going. There should be a list of the prop. Well, maybe not. Uh, keep going. There we go. We can just pull this up for a minute. I, I have to move the. So this is just this is just guesswork on some respects, but it's also uh, the actual gen it's generally the actual for the KOA in the vineyard. So we've asked the KOA to consider a an investment up. You know, we've talked about a billion four, million five is right about there. 
the Birds of Prey Vineyard, we've asked them to consider a $500,000 investment. Jovial Foods is probably looking at around 500,000. And uh, Mr. Newton wants to be engaged in the process. So we, we've asked him to, uh, to consider investment uh, along with everybody else. And these numbers are arbitrary. They're, you know, the first pr priority one set uh, for KOA in the vineyard, that's pretty accurate. And for Jovial Foods and priority two is pretty accurate. Everything else are just guesses. But the, the point of this is that we're asking these people to, to commit to funding under a program where they'll get a return of their money and a return on their money with a reasonable return um, to basically capitalize the startup of this water system and even the sewer conversation. If you go down to the next page, this is water. If you go to the next page, it's sewer. Uh, it's, again, these are just guesstimates. The reason Mr. Reich is so high with the sewer in my estimates is he's, his concept or their concept is to build mostly residential, which is gonna require a lot of sewer infrastructure. Um, again, these are just guesses. And then if you go into the next, the next screen, in theory, these are the total capital commitments that each one of the parties would come to the project with. The only ones that are really, you know, again, uh, uh, firmed up are KOA, the vineyard, um, and uh, you know, we have to talk about the others, but those are the two key players. The idea basically is that we would invest in cash and uh, provide the me mechanism of repayment. And I forgot where I was going with this. Where were we? Um, well, I think you're proving, you're, I think you're trying to explain, Ken, that, you know, KOA, although KOA has been the uh, main point of discussion, they're, they just are the ones who have the most eminent need, I guess. Exactly. So if you look, if you looked on a map, if you went back to the maps, Juliet, you can see how uh, the sewer, my sewer uh, discussion is evolving, right? Or my concept. Keep going. Right there. So what you have is you have the, oh, you had it. Well, back, keep going. The yellow exhibit you just had there. Here you go, right there. So those are the areas that I think are gonna uh, desire to have sewer. Um, KOA is, is optional. They've got uh, septic. Uh, Birds of Prey Vineyard, as far as we know, may not need it. Uh, but the, the plan, there's a former 100,000 foot building approved that was approved in 2005 for Hexagon. Uh, if it gets built anything like that or hospitality, they're gonna need sewer there. Uh, part of what got me involved in this in the first place is an Amazon discussion. Uh, it's my understanding or, or belief that through the tribe that Amazon was looking at the tribal property. The issue for them is sewer. The lack of sewer basically may have tabled a 500,000 foot square foot project and may have tabled Amazon. Uh, you know, we hope to continue forward. What Amazon needs is obviously they're asking for sewer, but they're all, they also need uh, ESFR sprinkler systems. Uh, the, the water lines down here are sufficient as far as I understand it to supply sprinklers. So Amazon is not completely out of the question, but if we don't take any action, the tribe won't be able to land them, land them, or anybody else in this, you know, in this district. We need to be able to provide uh, emergency, you know, sprinkler systems for the warehouses that Amazon would occupy. Uh, Jovial Foods would like to expand. They've got a warehouse. They're distributing food. You know, they'd like to bring on some food and beverage uh, through a commercial kitchen and some bed and breakfast type uh, offerings. They may need sewer and water. Uh, they, you know, she, they've asked to, to connect to the municipal water, and I think they'd like the sewer also. And then uh, Mr. Zeno and Mr. Reich, you know, that corner wants to be, you know, perhaps the future Main Street and or Mr. Newton's property across the street or some combination. Uh, they likely are going to need sewer. So we were trying to be pragmatic in all the decisions we made and running the running these numbers. And then if you go up to the next series of maps. Okay, keep going to the first district, please. 
keep going. All right, so this is the first priority. When we talk about KOA, we're really talking about KOA, the vineyard, possibly the corner, uh, the Quinlan property, 75 frontage road, 45 frontage road. And the reason we did mark this is there's some uncertainties about uh, navigating over or under the Chinook Brook and we prefer not to have the unknowns. So we just, we're just going with this for now. Uh, this $2.7 million budget appears achievable to us. And so this has been our focus to make sure we can deliver the first solution. If you go to the next one, that's a DOT map of the bridge to be crossed. This map is of Jovial Foods and she would pull water from the same location, 46 West and Orange West Lee Road, come through a small parcel and come directly into her parcel and serve that area. We, I think I call that uh, zone three you know, for water. Then you go down again to uh, the intersection of Route 2 and 184. We're really planning to include everybody. It's just a matter of time. And as we build the systems, we're building it with the idea that there's gonna be future extensions and inclusion of the adjacent property owners. But you can see we're focused on the Northwest corner where Mr. Zane and Mr. Reich are, and he has some existing water infra infrastructure there. They would like to sell water into the system. There's a possibility that Westerly could actually be a net buyer and the rest of the project area is going to need to buy water. And uh, we're hoping that, you know, we can work something out similar to what we talked about with Westerly, which is to buy wholesale, sell retail. But this, you know, this quadrant would serve all four corners of the route, the, the rotary. If you go on to the next one, You know, I, I arbitrarily just assigned 650,000. I said, well, if you're here, you may as well serve link to the area, to district zone four south of the highway, which is mostly tribal property, uh, but it's conventionally owned in the town and developable lands. Uh, and then I just extended it north. That, so you can see there's a lot more property included than just KOA. KOA is, it's just a benchmark for uh, location reference. Thanks, Ken. No problem. Other questions, um, feedback, comments? Um, yes, I'm gonna recognize Carolyn. She, she hasn't, go ahead, Carolyn. Set on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm Carolyn Howell. I live in North Stonington. I also serve. Um, I'm just speaking as a taxpayer. I just don't feel comfortable about having these types of meetings right now during the pandemic. Um, I personally don't agree with this. I don't think it's the time. I think there's a lot of businesses right now that are struggling and it's gonna take years to recover from the damage that's been done since March because of what we've been dealing with from COVID and the private sector. I know that in government, people don't necessarily feel the same pain because you're being fed by tax dollars. Um, also with this presentation, I noticed that at 100 Pendleton Hill Road, you're showing um, the owner as Nuco. Do you know who owns 100? That's Pendleton? not accurate. That's Bob Boysvane is the owner of that property. Right, that's correct. And Bob Boysvane um, is also sitting on the Water Pollution Control Authority. And he also um, was the prior owner of KOA. Um, so when I read your minutes from the September 24th meeting of the WPCA, and it says that the KOA was a driving force bet, you know, behind getting water, um, it's very concerning to me um, because I think when you're doing something like this, it needs to benefit the entire town um, because it's going to cost the entire town a lot of money, either directly or indirectly. Um, there may be people that want to invest, but until you have that, a guarantee in writing and that the town is not going to ultimately be responsible, um, I think we need to be very cautious because we don't want to be left holding the bag. Um, you talk about planning for the future. I am trying to plan for my future retirement and I would like to stay in North Stonington if I can afford it. Um, but the way things seem to be going, I don't know if that's going to be feasible. So I have a lot of concerns. I know I'm not the only one. I may be the only one that's brave enough to speak out and I'm speaking out for myself and people like me 
that do have concerns and I hope that you you hear me. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah, I appreciate your feedback. I think I think the reason we're talking about this is because we are concerned. I think we share the same concerns and that's the affordability. That's the main reason we're even talking about this in the first place. It would be much easier to not talk about this or even endeavor into this discussion. It's a very complicated thing to get into. Um, but the fact is, as that, um, as that graph illustrated, we, our grand list has not had exponential growth. And the fact is, if we don't have some level of growth that's a little bit more aggressive than what we've been having, that's gonna fall to the backs of taxpayers. So that's the reason there that we're are, There are many, many empty buildings all around us and all the surrounding towns. You look in Westerly, Stonington, Waterford, Groton, New London, everywhere. There's boarded up schools, buildings, all over the place. Um, there is an issue in our area and our state <laughs> is lacking money. I don't know where everyone thinks all of this money is going to come from. I understand that there's people that invest and that's what they do for a living. You know, they invest and they make money. Um, but not everybody's in that position. And I'm just, I'm very concerned. I, I am. Well, that's why we're having this meeting today is to, help, to hear those concerns and try to understand them and address them if necessary. Um, Mike, she brings up an interesting point that we, another thing that I think we should mention, which is, um, all the things that I'm talking about don't actually acknowledge the fact that when you build one of these projects, you substantially increase your tax, your taxable real, real estate asset. So the revenue coming to the town goes, is spiking, is going higher, right? There was a contract on the tribal property up until about three months ago to build that project. And I, if I remember right, I mean, it's, it's a 30 or $40 million project, I believe. And on the tax roll, it's a significant boost to the local economy. And as far as we understand, Amazon is or, and was behind it. And the reason it didn't happen is because the town wasn't ready for it. But it would have actually made the cost of living in North Stonington much lower because you would have a corporate taxpayer paying a much larger share uh, you know, than the before condition which is just empty land. Thank you, Ken. Um, go ahead, Joe. You're recognized. Uh, my, my main, one of my main concerns that I felt was here is, is we're talking water with the Westway, uh, Southeastern Connecticut water. That was brought in by the, uh, uh, the past uh, Sluckman's. And I know they bought out they took our water from over in the Cedar Ridge development because we couldn't continue to do the uh, chemicals in it. But uh, I was under the impression that they were supposed to, supposed to be doing our total water supply here. And would they be any part of this thing? And I also got to agree a little bit with Carolyn. Uh, there is a lot of concern in town and there is talk in town. And it can get very political involvement and who is who and who is B. Uh, boys of Vane, who was our Boys of Vane, and do I know Bob? I know Bob, but I didn't know Rob, uh, that type of thing. But uh, again, I think I want our Board of Finance, I want to hear in total how we could participate in it. And I think that second presentation answered a lot of my questions, but is there any way I can get a copy of this, uh, the presentation that was here? I know Juliet has some, but some of the stuff that Ken put up there, uh, especially on commitments from them major, uh, uh, can, you know, businesses in there. I'd like to have a copy so I could understand this a little better than that. And I think you put a lot of interest and involvement in this, but uh, I just would like to have a copy so I could get into it some more too, please. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Mike. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I know I'm not recognized. I just don't know where the thing is to raise my hand. Oh, all right. Uh, well, let me just let Brett go. He, he's recognized, and then we'll get you next, Brian, okay? Right, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Brett. Hi. Brett Mastrian, Chairman of Economic Development Commission. Um, I, I think it's a great conversation tonight. Um, and as one knows, 
that listen to some of these meetings, I'm a proponent of if we can do some of these things privately, it's not um, the town putting up money to do it'd be one. I would say I'm a little concerned with things that I hear tonight um, and mentioned a lot of the goals that were established our goal, a lot of our, I'm not sure who he's referring to as goals. Um, Matt, we can't really, uh, as as I, we can't really hear you very well. You're, you're kind of in up. and out. Breaking up. I don't know if you have a bad internet connection, but I can't, we're not, he, we're not hearing you very well. I'm, I'm hearing like every, every other word. But I think I can respond to your question though. I think I got you. Yeah. So that we're, and, uh, the main, I, I believe that Mike was speaking about the, or we were talking about the exclusive services area. And it's not an hour thing, it's the town's thing. The exclusive service area, our authority, gives the town the exclusive right to sell water. And that authority is purely of the town of North Stonington, nobody else. And if I have first Wait, hour, Stan, I don't know. Can I remember you were speaking in, in referring to in to the town, but in my understanding, this none of this has come before economic development or planning in regards to specifics. And these have been the that are WPCA are at the chart of a lot of things. And to present town some of the things without even asking or talking to their commission, saying, referring cards all the time. It might be a few of the people talking to at town hall, not the of all the board commissions and even all the others on, on, on this call. But I think that can do it in a, in a private matter would be great. Um, so that I'm important to look at is the, this growth. I, I know Dan talks about which is our grant growth. I, I've asked an analysis to see what are this growth will be water and sewer. Yeah, I got to We can't. We can't hear what you're. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm not trying to be rude. I just every other word we're hearing. I don't. I can't. I can't. Is anyone else hearing Brad? Yes, Jake. No. no, no one's he no one's hearing you right. So I don't know if you can get a better connection and come back. But, Mike, but I believe I understand where he's headed. With I believe he's. I understand where he's headed with this. So I understand. And I respect your Brett. Uh, expect what you're saying. I guess we've been working on this quite a bit. Uh, we being Mike, Juliet, and Bob Boisevain. It's been a closed circle, basically, just to try to formulate strategies try to move together in concept. Um, so none of this is, is ironclad. It hasn't been vetted through the Economic Development Commission because we are working in concepts trying to move forward, um, you know, with what, you know, first, the first thing is just the water requirements of KOA is an express need. Uh, they've got a family well system and something that needs to be corrected. Uh, so we're doing our best to address the timeliness of their requested delivery. Uh, but I totally understand that you think some of these ideas and concepts should be presented to the Economic Development Council and vetted more before presented in a venue like this. I understand your concerns. Well, I think part of it is that this is what we're doing tonight. I mean, we're, you know, we, I invited all the boards and commissions to this basically joint meeting. Um, I asked these boards and commissions to come and be a part of the conversation there's other members of each of the commissions here. I'd love to hear from every single one of them tonight. And that, that's what we are doing, in fact, tonight. That's, that's, we are having a joint discussion about all of this so we can hear the feedback. And, uh, and listen, I don't, you know, at the end of the day, we, just to remind everyone, like right now, we're following what we feel is the right path based on the goal set forth in the plan of conservation and development. And that's what we're going to do for the next year, because that's the plan of conservation development we have. We'll build another plan of conservation development, you know, in two years, there'll be another one. And if that path is a different charted course, then that's totally fine. But that's where we get our uh, 
gasoline from, I guess, is just, you know, to keep going on that path. And that's what, you know, that I and Christine have been working towards. Uh, Brett, did you get, you get on? Mike, I, I called in now. Can you hear me? Oh, better? wonderful. Much clearer. Very good. They, um, yeah, Ken just answered some of my questions and talking about going in front of the other boards and commissions. But, you know, we talked about different zones and some of these zones have changed. So I, I wonder who changed the phase is, I mean, I, let me start because I broke up in the beginning. I've been through four different studies of the water and sewer over the years. And we use a lot of hypothet hypothetical information when we come to, to a lot of this. And it seems like we're doing some of that tonight of buy-ins and things like that. But like I said, I, I think it'd be great if we can do something that um, is privately paid for without much, if any expense to the town. I think that's important because I do look at the grand list and some of the questions that I've had in the past is, I think it's important to do an analysis of that grand list to see what the growth would be of these parcels with public water and sewer compared to without. And does that cost justify it to the town to spend any of our own money to, to increase that. Um, so I, I, I still request that information and I, I think it'd be important to the community to get that. And I was hoping out of some of the surveys and um, studies we've had over the years, we got that information and we still haven't. I'd like to respond to that. Uh, the, the various zones that were identified originally in all of the plans, all the entire sewer district is made up of those four zones, right? We have, right. Ken has more zones, but four uh, phases. If the town has been expressed, the town has been constant in their expression that they don't want the taxpayers money involved in this. So in part, our decisions for each of these scenarios are based on what private developer has expressed an interest. So. In other words, we want to go where the money is so that the taxpayer doesn't have to pay that money. So our, our, our initial phases shifted, shifted back based on the moving parts of this private investment. And the reason it's very difficult to determine what the overall tax impact will be is that those parts are constantly moving. So some of them we can nail down now very easily because we have the wineries you know, building plans, I can give those to Daryl, he can come up with an assessment, great. And and we also have a chart that was based on what the land value would be should water run by it or, or be available to hook up to sewer. And we do have that, I can give that to you. Um, Daryl did do that. Um, but there's more to it than that, of course. I mean, it depends on what building might land on that parcel to uh, again, increase that value. But to Mike's point, when, and Ken's point, when hopefully this development takes place, you, there is no denying that it's going to add to the grand list. I mean, that is as clear as clear can be. There's just no doubts there. And if Ken can run through these scenarios with the private investors and us to figure out a way to finance it in a way that doesn't involve the tax rolls, why was that a win? And how excited should we be for this? that we have people willing to invest in our town. And if we can do something like uh, prepare the memorandum of agreement with Stonington, or we can, I don't know, Ken had some ideas of, of a way that the towns can still be involved, obviously with the service area and the water utility district commission, things like that. That's a small impact on us for a huge tax impact on the town and creating an opportunity for development in the area that we said we wanted it with private investment. Like, I'm excited about this. This is what we want. This is what we've always wanted and we've done it. Yay for us. <laughs> so. No, I mean, it's a good job. And a lot of this work was done much prior to even myself or Juliet even being here. I mean, when you look back on some of the work that, um, you know, I think Nick did, Nick Mullane, uh, you know, who was in, in office for a long time to make sure that, I know he did work to make sure that the exclusive service area was ours. Um, so that we can control, you know, have some level of control, especially on the water side of things. So, I mean, we're just following, you know, we're following a path that is 
Um, it's clear as far as that we want to have development in this area. That's what, you know, we know that that's, that's something that's been charted for us. So, although there's some other things that are, you know, that's, that are a little bit moving, um, we're trying to stay on that path and kind of work with the moving parts as best we can. You know, I think part of it is to, um, you know, just to address, like I have, you know, I'll have conversations with, and certainly we haven't had a lot of joint board meetings like we're having tonight. Um, but I have conversations, whether it's with Brett or whether it's with Dan Spring or whether it's with, you know, Juliet or whoever it is as the, as the leadership to make sure that, you know, we're at least talking about it. And then certain things are able to go back to the boards. That's completely appropriate and what your leadership should be doing. I think that's a statement that I really need to make because I, I feel like I do hear sometimes where there's like this thought of that there's different conversations going on. And, yeah, there are different conversations going on with me and certain board chairs or Juliet or Christine, that's what should be happening. And then like, we should have a meeting like this. If we should have, you know, if there's more meetings like this that have to happen, that's what we do. And if you look back at some of the meetings we have had, they've been pretty good. I mean, we've had, we've made progress in the last year and a half. So I'm pretty proud of the work that, you know, we've all done um, to kind of get to where we are now. And I'm excited that we're on the cusp of getting, you know, having some a actual activity happen. Um, but I, yeah, I think we just need to, um, everyone needs to just kind of understand where we are. Um, and then those concerns, you know, some of the concerns we're hearing tonight, I think we need to be able to address them a little bit better if, if they're addressable. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, Mike, I think, go ahead, Bob, you have your hand up. I, I do, can thanks. I so um, here's my question. So I was listening earlier to Carolyn Howell speak, and she mentioned the name Bob Boisevain, and then she mentioned he was on, I think she said he was on WPCA, which I believe is true. And I heard Ken mention when Brett asked why it hasn't come more in front of P, um, planning and zoning and, and economic development, Ken mentioned he's been working within a circle of people, which included yourself, Juliet, Bob Boisevain, and himself. And also Ken mentioned when he was looking at his maps earlier that there's a piece of land between the highway and KOA. And he pointed out that that was going to be earmarked for possibly abandoned from a hotel to whatever, some sort of commercial development. Now, if Bob owns that land and the water is going to be going right by that property to get to KOA and he's a past owner of KOA, doesn't that seem like he wouldn't be in, normally in that circle of people deciding these things, even though he's on the WPCA? Because it sounds to me like there's, there could be a, a conflict of interest in me now that I'm working on the, the code of ethics for the town. I'm probably my ears more to the ground for this, but that doesn't seem like that would be a feasible thing to be happening. Why he well, he would be on from WPC and not somebody else? Can I just jump to that too. What's that? Can I jump in for just jump in for a second. Well, so let me jump. Says, I'll jump. Ken, I'll jump in first. First of all, all jumping, right? I don't know. I you know, Ken's. I've gotten a few emails where Bob was in, involved, but honestly, I haven't had any meetings that I can think of where Bob was actually at them. So, Ken, you you want to clarify that because there's obviously a couple of people who have some concern about that on this call so sure go ahead and yeah, clarify. I mean, it's easy to address i mean as you know mike I, i've been the most objective party in all the decisions i've been making trying to keep doors open with everyone and keeping all conversations on the table including ever intergovernmental between the towns you know uh meetings and, and discussions between property owners and keeping everybody to engaged you know despite you know a, a little bumpy road from here to there Bob Boyce-Rain has an influence on any of my decisions. Some of the stuff that I've done has been in concept and it still needs to be changed. It, all I'm trying to do is develop the idea, the mechanisms and the, the program, but ultimately all those decisions are subject to review. So I just, I had to go far afield and move faster than everybody else is to look ahead, to, to come to the conclusion that I believe we can deliver this it with a sound financing program that will enable the town to own it without incurring any debt. I mean, that was a significant leap. Took a lot of math, a lot of calculations, a lot of assumptions. And in my world, we, we focus on legal, financial, physical. Um, we have to look at, at the, the broader picture here of development, but I've been the only one driving the assumptions on anything that I've reported. And the only thing that I've done is copied back just to make sure you knew what I was doing. And that includes you, Mike, you, Juliet, and Bob. 
That's all. I haven't really asked for much input. As you know, Don't unless it was required. has no authority over water. That should also be crystal clear. Yeah, and I reduce That's their sewer. Yeah, WPCA is is not actually. It's confusing to people, but they 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 only oversee the uh, sewer. The board of selectmen, because we don't have a water authority in our exclusive area, is actually the oversight of water. The only reason that we've been talking about KOA as the driving factor is because they're the ones with the money, and they and they're the ones that have the need. So you know, it just so happens that yeah, I guess Bob owns a, par a parcel over there. Um, well, I have a couple of other people and I got to go to Brian Rathman because he asked to be recognized earlier and I passed him over. So go ahead, Brian. You're on, you are unmuted. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got a few concerns about this. I, I think it's the wrong time for our town to, to go toward the water and the sewage simply because I think it needs a lot more conversation as far as the quality of the water that comes from Westerly. I've read a lot of articles in the past few years where they've had problems with their water uh, and even some of their lines, I believe, and they took down one, one tower over there. I don't think it's, it, it, and I hear a lot of people in Wesley saying they don't even like to drink the water because they have to add to it. Uh, the sewers, I think everybody's read about the sewers in Stonington where they're having a, uh, they don't know, you pointed it out, Mike, where they don't know if they got uh you know, the, for the volume that would come in. Uh, plus they said things about the rates that would go up. And it, there's a lot of things there that's gotta be talked about. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is I know it's been mentioned that North Stonington would be, have the own it. Uh, well, if you own it, that means the North Stonington would maintain it. So if there was a problem, then we got another problem we gotta deal with. Uh, we have one of the best aquifers in our town. I'd rather go towards something like that. But I also look at this whole thing as a cancer. You bring in a little bit, and then it's got to go to there, and then it's got to go to here. And then next thing you know, they're going to say, okay, now everybody's got to pay for it, whether you're hooked up to it or not. Now, I have my own wells, very good, and I don't want to have to pay for for water or sewage coming into town when I got my own. I paid enough money for everything I have. Uh, if KOA, they can, I'm sure they could just drop some wells in. Uh, the, other, the other part of it would be if we, <laughs> a lot of people, I don't know, I know I have, I just got shocked the other day with the, with the reval. And I've been hearing this for years. Well, okay, we're going to bring this in. We're going to bring other, uh, it's going to bring in business, your taxes. It's going to help with your taxes. Well, the only thing it's helped with everything we've done so far is have my taxes go up. So I'm very leery of going into, going into any loans or bringing anything like that from another town, which I, I don't know exactly what all, what quality it will be provided if if it does come to town. But anyways, those are my concerns as a taxpayer has been here a long, long time. And I think they gotta be answered before we before we move forward to any of it. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Uh, Galaxy S9, you are recognized. Is Hello? Yes. Yes, uh, this is Robert White calling. Hi, Robert. Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks for Good. coming on. Uh, resident for 54 years, and I just I want to applaud your committee on, you know, looking for stuff for the town that uh, we can do in commercial areas and light industrial areas to lower our tax base. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to applaud you for that. Um, it's about time that our town becomes a little more uh, business friendly, I guess I could say. Uh, as because I've seen a lot of stuff that's been turned away years before this, that would have been good revenue for the town. And some of the things, you know, weren't even considered or looked at. Um, my third thing is I would just wondering, uh, as you spoke about Nick Mullane doing some work on this and 
Westley has inquired as well about uh, some wells. And I know Nick had done some research on some wells uh, in the vicinity of the rotary. Uh, would you or have you entertain the idea of maybe the town putting in our own water supply and selling it to the customers to increase our tax base and welcome people uh, into the town. And I think we also could be selling water to Westerly instead of buying water from Westerly. And with the aquifer that runs underneath here, we have that perfect opportunity that other towns don't have this opportunity that we have to supply our own water and be able to profit off of selling it instead of buying it. So that's and, a great, no, are you, go ahead. Do you have more? Yes. I, and I'd just like to say, um, Timmy York, who was the building inspector in town for many years, I think he was awarded the strictest building inspector in the state of Connecticut. When I built my house, I chose to put in a dug well in this gravel base that's on my land. When Tim come down to do my water sample for my CO, I had the test on myself. I had just put the well in, started drinking the water as we were building the, the place. And at the CO, I had a company do my water test for me. And I didn't know what any of the numbers meant. I just knew it had passed. So when Timmy came down to do the CO, he asked me if I had my water test and I handed it to him and he started finger through in it, which he knew what everything meant in the numbers. And in those numbers, he said I had the cleanest water he had ever seen since he was the building inspector in North Stonington. So I think we have a perfect opportunity to entertain the idea of drilling wells or maybe like digging a reservoir or something of that neighborhood where we just and sell it rather than buy it. But, uh, that, and that's it. Thank you. Well, thank you for that comment. And um, I think that's part of what we are talking about doing. I mean, we're not talking about necessarily, you know, opening our own water company. As, as you've heard on this call already tonight, you know, from, from the couple of people who are here, you know, there's, there's a lot of tentative, tentativity of moving something forward from the town side. And, and unfortunately, you know, whatever, that's what we hear at a lot of meetings is those who are very concerned about moving them forward. So we're trying to come up with a way that doesn't impact the taxpayer, but does can keep us in a seat of control. So I think Ken kind of outlined it a little bit where we would potentially with the help of some of our partners who are going to be landowners there that want to want to build wells and want to contribute to a system but yet North Stonington remains in the driver's seat where they're, we're going we're gonna to have that exclusive service rights area. And we would ultimately end up being the ones who could sell the water, even though we didn't have to invest in the system ourselves. It's really winning formula potentially that we're looking at. Um, but I just want to be clear, like we're, we're just talking about all this stuff. And yeah, we're going to probably try to move something forward for KOA because they, they have a need. They have seven wells and they don't operate properly. They, they need to have a public water supply come to them. They have a dire situation there. And as a business owner in our town, we have to care about that. The Department of Public Health tells us that. So that is a- Regional plans too, you might wanna mention. You know, there is a regional water plan for our area and they have identified that it might take a group effort, you know, to be able to supply everybody with the water they need because there are spots that have great water and then there are spots that you would think have fantastic water, but don't. So it might take all of us contributing into a system that the town would ultimately manage because they well, hold the service. I mean, we, we're going to keep this, you know, as things move forward, if there's whether or not, you know, the town has to come up with any money, which they're, you know, right now, that's what we're saying. The town is going to have to come up with money. Like that's what we're taught. What we're, we're clearly saying that tonight, based on what we're trying to do, it's not going to be on the back of the taxpayer but we want to keep everybody informed about what direction we're going in so we can continue to have these dialogues with our boards and commissions and with the public. So everyone's aware of what we're trying to accomplish here because it is in line with what we have said we wanted to accomplish 
in the plan of conservation and development, you know, and, and making sure that we're taking care of these areas, making sure, as Juliet said at the beginning, that we don't have development in areas we don't want them. We have development in areas that we do want it, where we've already established that we want that development. So um, I have a couple other hands. Brett, I don't know if you meant to still have, have your hand up or Brett, you recognize yep. if you did. Yes. Yeah, I, I just didn't finish um, when we were talking earlier. Um, just a few questions. Um, well, I'll make a comment first. I think it might be helpful if you expand your small circle um, of people that you communicate with on this to maybe the chairs of the, the committees that are involved with um, development in town and expanding on that. I do think it's a good idea. It, it. And uh, I think that would just help with the open lines of communication. And so we're all on the same page. Um, and I just caution Ken, I, I know there's no intent here, but I'm just dropping names of potential businesses that were looking to come in um, or under contract. I, I deal with some of these businesses and some of this information isn't for public knowledge. So I, I would just caution you on that. Sure. Then the second thing is, have you gotten any feedback at all about the dollar values that were suggested to the property owners regarding the buy-in for just the water? Because I, I know the sewers are going to be a much longer um, process and, and much deeper discussion than, than yeah. water would be. Um, so I just was wondering if you got any feedback on those numbers that you, you showed tonight. Yes. So I, spoke, they, I spoke, spoke directly with KOA, uh, confirmed it. I, I spoke of a million four. We're talking a million five with the number shown, shown on the screen. But yes, that's been discussed. And he said, as long as you can provide me with a bona fide project budgeted that's deliverable uh, in the first quarter, you'll have a commitment from us. His words. Uh, I also had a similar conversation with the owner of the vineyard um, and uh, Mr. Connery. I explained to him what number we were hoping for him to commit to. And he, as far as I know, he's on board. So we're, we're going from verbal commitments at this point to really understanding how we're gonna document all this. And we've been lucky actually. We've, we've had some input from one of the top water attorneys in the state, uh, Bruce Chudwick with Goodman, Ch uh, Shipman Goodman, gave us some of his time ideas. Uh, you know, I've got a document here for a water commission ordinance that he drafted and basically just handed to us. He said, this is probably what you need. So we're not, we're, you know, we are not navigating in the dark. We're, we're working with everybody and uh, confirming as we can go. And I think just to address Brian's concern in Galaxy S, Galaxy X, S9, I think it's important for everybody to understand there's a ton of work that was done here outside of any time paid for by the town to basically build this concept out for the city. We spoke with Westerly Water at length and Westerly Water is a net buyer of water. Uh, they want to buy more than they supply. The only reason that we're looking to them as a supply source is because of the proximity of their 12 inch line to a crossing on Frontage Road. Um, <clears throat> their ability to deliver a 12 inch line to KOA in short fashion. Uh, but ultimately they view themselves as a net buyer of water. So, uh, that should be good news to North Stonington because you've got your first customer. And not only does Westerly serve their city, and they do have water quality issues. Uh, a, if they drill, if they if they use water that they buy from North Stonington, you'll end up buying North Stonington water anyway. And <clears throat> they deliver water and own the water infrastructure in Pawkatuck. So inherently, North Stonington water would get sold to Pawkatuck. Westerly and possibly even areas in Washington County. Um, we've spoken just for the benefit of the, everyone uh, to Southeast Connecticut water leadership, Groton Utilities, Town of Stonington, Stonington WPCA, Westerly Water, um, who else? You know, the Tribal Nation. Uh, we have an easement currently in review with the tribe. Uh, we have an easement in verbal by Jason Quinlan. We've been doing a ton of work to deliver this for you. 
not only just, you know, it's an interesting project, but also I, I've enjoyed working with everybody that I've met there. You know, it's been, it's been a positive experience. Very rarely I've had any negative feedback. Um, and I see an opportunity for a long-term uh, investment in time to help the community. And I, I just happen to be lucky enough to have some background and connections to people who are experts in bond finance. And so we can help in an unusual way or unique way. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Joe Gross, did you have another question? You can, uh, um, you can just unmute. I'm unmuted, Mike. Yes, sir. Mike, I, I got to commend you on this meeting tonight and it's an open discussion meeting and it's especially communicating with the public. And, and I, I feel it's just a great thing. And you've heard the expressions from some of the feedback. I think the concern with the property next to the KOI is a big concern in town. Not just a couple people. Uh, that's been coming around. That's one of the ones I mentioned along with Bob and Carolyn. You've heard that now. Uh, I was part of that hearing at around town. Uh, but there's a lot of North Stonian politics that gets involved in everything we do. I think we have to go forward. You people have done a lot of work there, but what you've done is not knowledgeable to the public. And I, I do believe that the peers of the community is the public. So that's why I'm asking it. Can I get some of this information? I think I can get it from Juliet, but that commitment's from them people. I mean, uh, we've got to move ahead. And whether it's the time or not, it's up to you guys, but I got to thank you for this open meeting. It's a nice first open discussion meeting we've ever had, I believe. And well, it's not putting anything down, nobody buying, selling or anything, but it's what you've done. Well, that's, you. nice, that's nice, Joe. Actually, that's a nice way to kind of almost wrap things up because we did we did set an 8.30 on this. I, I'd like to test something out with um, to kind of end this. I Hi. have some, Oh, uh, Ian? Yeah, I can't find the raise your hand button either. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, just speak right up. Hey, no problem. That's fine. Um, I, I would, I applaud Ken for the work he has done on this um, to find an option for bringing this in with no cost to the town. And if, if this actually works, um, I'm, I'm really excited to see it happen. But I am concerned. Um, I think it was Brian that um, mentioned the maintenance of the system. Um, that does concern me because eventually that would be up to the town to deal with. The other thing that concerned me was I thought I heard Ken say something about the investments that the um, individual um, entities were making would be reimbursed. Did I mishear that? Or, or could you explain that a little bit better? Sure, That's, that, that is a goal. And you know, it's hard when you're working in a context like this to differentiate between goals and you know what's, what's been affirmed in contracts. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a methodology that I, I've worked with public-private finance in the past. I've been involved with fairly substantial bond districts uh, and district restructurings and, and things. I don't have all the answers, uh, but I came up with some concepts as to how uh, th those funds could be returned. Generally, if you talk to Westerly, I mean, Westerly does not finance any infrastructure for any developers or any property owners. What we're doing here is a little bit different because what we're trying to do is establish a new system. And, you know, whether the town buys it or not is discretionary. And there are other utility providers that would love to service this area. If, if the town ever decided to opt out. So I don't think you, my opinion is I don't think you ever really need to worry about inheriting a problem because plenty of people will want to, would like to have the ability to serve the town similar to Westerly serving Pocketuck. You know, Aquarian has showed interest in others. Um, as long as the, the amount, you know, it's structured properly the maintenance and the operational cost of the system should not be a tax on the town. It should be self-sufficient. That's the goal. And the whole goal of the way I approached it in, in concept is that we would charge enough fees 
that the system would be fiscally, you know, balanced and the town wouldn't buy it until it was and it had a track record of, say, five years, three to five years. So the goal is to manage, is to bake the risk out of it before the town makes a financial commitment to it. But the town would be part of all decisions made while the, the district's being formed and, and uh, designed and built. Uh, they'd have a, a say for everything because it's their ESA. Thanks, Ken. Does that help, Ann? Yes, thank you. What I'd like to do before we wrap up is, uh, it's actually something I kind of want to test out anyway, in the event that we end up having a, a slightly virtual town meeting, um, which we have other things to work out too. But I've got a couple basic questions that I'd like to just throw up on a poll here and have everybody just kind of vote on. Um, so I'm going to ask Christine if she would pull those questions up. And I have one extra question that I'll ask at the end that's not in the poll question. So, Christine, you want to give that a go? Or did you fall asleep? I did not fall asleep, but I clicked a button and it's saying that my polling session is inactive. Ah, son of a gun. Well, that's all right. You know, it wasn't meant to be. Um, so we'll, we'll try that out another time. Um, I think this was a good meeting. Uh, wait, hang on. Yep. All right. Good. Let's try it. You've got, uh, if everybody can just uh, click on, let's see, how do you do it here? If everybody wants to click on the, the uh, question, the answer that they'd like to have an answer to here, see how this works. So, and some folks might not be able to do this if you're on the phone, so. If you aren't able to do it, well, we're going to assume maybe that's probably part of the problem why we're not getting 100% participation. So how do you go to the next one, Christine? Um, I, since I can't see it, I don't know. Oh, you can't see the poll? All right, so here's the, I'm, I'm doing it. So here was the result of the first one. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, you're doing them one each? Okay. I don't know if, now I'm going to hit relaunch. Yeah, 100% yes. I don't see a second question is the problem. So I entered them in as four separate polls so that the questions all didn't come up at once because of what we had talked about the other day. Um, so is but, this the second? Oh, yeah. Here, how about this? You know, I can't see anything. I, I think because Mike and I are on the same username. Oh, she's got it. She did it. Yeah, I see how it's going. All right, so here's oh, no, the second one. <laughs> so if you guys would tell us out loud what the results are, because Nita and I can't see anything. Yes. The first one was 10 out of 14, 10 said yes, and four didn't vote. And Nita doesn't know what the questions are, so if you could read the questions. <laughs> first one is, was, uh, do you want to see an increase in the grand list? And the second one is, do you want... Do you want the tax burden for residential properties to decrease? And we have one person saying no, and uh, 10 people saying yes. <laughs> all right, I think that's probably all we're gonna get. go on to the next one if we can. Is, uh, do you support, oh, wait, let me launch it. Do you support the commercial zones as defined in the plan of conservation and development? Yes. Could you hear me? Yes. Yes, we heard you. Yeah. It looks like the same same 10 people. So I've, oh no, we got 11 this time. Yep, right. we got 11. All right. Hang on. And this is, we got one more question after this. So that one, the results were 10 people supported the commercial zones as defined in the plan, and one does not. Um, and the last one. Do you support water sewer being installed in the zones as defined by the studies discussed at this meeting? So that would be the sewer district that was established. Yes.
11 NIDA makes 12. So we have eight that do support the water sewer being installed in the zones as defined by the studies and four who do not. All right, good. So that's our four questions. And I think that's helpful to end the meeting with that. We still have, um, so we, we are moving forward with doing this work because we are directed to per our direction from the plan of conservation development. But what this tells me is that we still have a lot more informing and, uh, and uh, fact finding and educating and discussing to do. So my last question, which is not on a poll, is that I think that um, rather than just having more meetings with just chairs or whatever, that we should do more forums like this on this topic with all boards and commissions being welcome and, and uh, encouraged to participate. Um, so we can have some more open dialogue and really we can share where we're at, um, maybe with a shorter time frame. We don't need to have an hour and a half meeting, um, but maybe we could just certainly like say a month from now, talk about what, where we're at with the water sewer initiatives that we have uh, briefly, and then to get more um, feedback from people based on that. Would, uh, would anyone be opposed to having more meetings like this? I would assume not. I think it's a, probably a good, go ahead, Joe. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're not opposed to it. If you have something to say, you go ahead. Maybe you are opposed. Unmute it. Or... You, just to, you just have to unmute Joe or. But I think it's also important to appreciate the, um, you know, maintaining our business friendliness, so to speak, and appreciating, you know, folks like Frank Zano's willing to work with us to figure out a solution that works best for him and, and for the rotary and actually talking to us about it, like what would we like to see there? So, you know, development and investment's gonna happen whether the town participates or not in some cases. And it's important that we stay supportive, I believe. Yeah, I think so. I think we've seen those situations where development comes our way that we're not happy with. And I think thankfully, I don't feel like I've been he, you know, like too privy to some of those discussions. Some of them were before I was here, but there was some seriously problematic projects presented and we want to make sure we're, we're putting ourselves in a situation that we, we, we get what we want. So go ahead, Joe, you unmuted. Did you have something to say? I'm sorry, did you hear my last comments? No, sir, we did not. I said, I, I, I support these types of meetings. I think it's very, very conducive to everybody. And not everybody in the public can be on a board. So the board has a lot of help in the public. We're here to work with you. And I'm more than willing to pick up any loose stuff that we can, that needs help with. And we're just here. There's people in town to help. Have more of these meetings. I appreciate Because you haven't been doing too good with me lately, but you're lucky to stay too tonight. Okay, thanks, Joe. Mark, you um you unmuted. I don't know if you had something to say. Maybe you didn't mean to. Okay. Um, and then Carolyn, did you have a comment? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that I do think that these meetings like this are important to have an open dialogue with everyone on the boards and commissions and also the public, but I also want to um, address the fact that not all of the public have um, the ability, the ability to meet like this. So you are excluding a lot of the public when you do meet in this way. So I would have to disagree respectfully. Anyone can actually call into this meeting. And I don't know many people that don't at least have a telephone. Um, that this is not something you have to have a computer for you. Actually, there's a phone number and a code that you just poke in. So I, and unfortunately, also well, also, a lot of people aren't aware of these meetings because they don't subscribe to email. They don't have email. They don't have computers. So I'm just speaking for all of the public who live in our town and pay taxes. Great. So actually, before you mute back up again, so we use uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the newspaper, news and announcements. Um, we use email blasts. How, how else would you think that we should... Um, I, I would be. I would welcome any other ideas on how to communicate with more of the public. Did you have something specific that you feel we can do better at? 
I think the problem right now is the pandemic. I think you have the elderly who cannot go to the senior center where they used to be able to meet and discuss these sorts of things. So they may very well get one or the other of the newspaper. Um, however, you know, they may not be aware. Plus this is usually probably past their bedtime. So uh, I'm just speaking up for all of the public. This is not ideal for everyone to be able to participate. And a lot of times in these meetings, people are, they make comments or suggestions and they're told, you know, thank you for your comment. And then they're muted where in a regular meeting, if we could all meet together as we used to in, a, in the same room and sit at a table and talk together about all of our concerns and issues where everybody could have a say and be heard, um, I think people just feel better about that. Where, I mean, we don't have to all agree and please convince me to, you know, understand and agree with your side of things. I, I'm not opposed to listening to the facts um, and having my mind changed, but I am a proponent of being educated before I make a decision. So I think that everybody needs to be educated. The, the resources need to be there and we need to meet people where they're at. That's all that I'm saying. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, you know, I think we have had better turnouts than we ever had for in-person meetings. I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. But I, I understand no matter what, we will never be able to get everyone to fully participate. It's just not possible. And we're trying to do the best we can. So uh, with that, I've taken 15 minutes more of your time than I promised. So I do apologize for that. I thank everyone for their participation tonight. Um, I would like to set up another meeting like this. Um, and once uh, Ken... Uh, when, once we have a little more something to report, I think we should probably try to do this in another month or so uh, with a little bit more information and have some more open dialogue. So with that, I would ask uh, one of the selectmen if there's a motion to adjourn. Uh -huh. yep. Oh, uh, go ahead, Bob, is your second? Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you.